you are here at my channel, chances are you are struggling in some way, shape, or form with food, possibly even an eating disorder. Today I wanted to talk more about that binging, binging and purging cycle. It can be such a vicious cycle and so hard to break. And today I wanted to share five tips with you on how you could start to work to break that vicious and awful cycle. First, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I'm Long Island's eating disorder specialist. I post on this channel three times a week all about eating disorders, body image issues, and general mental health. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button down below. Also, I have a weekly blog. I post every Friday on it and an Instagram. I will leave those links in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. Please do. Also, if you like this video at the end, I would greatly appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you are struggling with binging and purging, you know that it could be a really hard cycle to break and it feels at times almost impossible. So I wanted to help guide you here a little bit to give you some ideas that might help to break it up a little bit, might not make the entire world of difference um, because obviously it's really really important that if you are struggling with this that you are getting the proper help from an eating disorder specialist that is something extremely imperative these are some generic tips that i would encourage you that if you haven't already uh, tried to try it and also to speak with your therapist about it too to see if there's any other methods in addition to these that could be helpful for you in breaking the cycle the number one tip that i have is to make a rule for yourself to not purge. Now what I mean is exactly what I said, a rule, meaning a rule that you cannot break, that you will not purge. So essentially you are saying that I am not, no matter what happens, I am not going to purge. And I know that this sounds, may sound a little impossible. It may sound very difficult for you. However, what happens is that a lot of times we maybe on an unconscious level give ourselves the permission to binge because we had every intention of purging it afterwards so you engage and you plan for it or maybe you don't plan for it um, but you decide that okay it's uh, it's something that I can do I can binge because I'll just purge it all up afterwards and sometimes when we say and we make it a rule to ourselves and we are adamant about following it that no matter what happens we are not going to purge a lot of times what that does is actually bring it back brings it back to the binging behavior and because you don't have that ability to release it it oftentimes can help just say okay I'm not going to binge again it might not be on the conscious level um, however a lot of times the not being able to purge can help inhibit the binging behavior because the binging is kind of um, also relies on uh, the purging uh, afterwards now you might ask, well, that might not work. So you might end up binging anyway. Okay, so I still want you to stick with that rule. You're still saying I'm not going to purge, as I said, no matter what. So let's say you binge. The most important thing is to sit with it. The feeling will pass, the guilt will pass. It might be a while before that guilt passes, but most importantly, just allow yourself to sit with it because it's going to be something that you don't really have an option. I would encourage you to have coping skills ready and to have distraction ready because as I said, it might not be very comfortable physically or mentally to be sitting with the aftermath of a binge. However, do whatever you can to just allow yourself to get through that period of time where you still feel it very fresh. Distracting and coping is key there. My second tip goes back to a concept I talked about in another video. It's called neuroplasticity. Do not click off the channel, off the video just because it sounds super complicated. It's really not. It basically goes back to the, uh, the way that our brain forms habits and the way our brain learns. Uh, and I'll just give a brief overview because as I said, I did it, or maybe I didn't say it, but I'll say it now. I did a whole video on it. Um, so basically how it works is that the way our brain operates is that when we do something or we feel something or whatever it might be and then we engage in a behavior our brain forms this path that basically it's saying that okay when you feel this or when you experience this behavior or behavior or feeling you are going to end up you know doing this behavior 
So what happens with binging in, in for this instance, let's say every time you feel sad, again, might not be on a conscious level, but every time you feel sad, you end up binging. What happened at some point in time was that you felt sad and there was some probably some sort of reinforcing um, experience within you from binging that all of a sudden your brain said, okay, next time that you're sad, the next thing that you have to do is binge. Again, usually on an unconscious level. So next time that you're sad, all of a sudden you're going to start engaging in your binge behaviors. So you, everyone's binge is different. Everyone's reason for their binge is different. But just for this example, let's say that your binge typically starts with ice cream. Like you just, for some reason, every time that you're sad, you go to ice cream and that all of a sudden after the ice cream, then you tend to go to the cookies and then you tend to go to something salty because you had enough sweets and then it's like, okay, that's enough salt. Now let me get something that's sweet again or tart or something and then all of a sudden you have this path that you are going down until the end of the binge however that might look like for you so neuroplasticity basically is saying that in this moment you have a path already formed for this type of behavior so your binges have a path that is formed in your brain it's very difficult to break those again though I want to make sure make it clear it is not impossible to break it it's just very difficult so basically what we need to work on is understanding that but also dealing and trying to figure out how to break that up every single time that we form an alternative alternative path it helps to break up that formulation that brain path that we had developed so how that might look is that next time that you feel sad because you need to identify that that is a trigger for you you're going to give yourself at least some space for at least 10 minutes before you go for the ice cream or maybe you start your binge and then at the cookies you realize that you're about to do it perhaps give yourself some time there again it's just breaking up the pattern it's breaking up the monotonous flow of your binge and it's weakening the pathway Perhaps you can even stop completely your binge and or go in an alternative direction or maybe you change up the pattern of the binge like what you eat next just to anything that changes the pattern that is already formed in your brain. This is helping to weaken that pathway so that it's more able to you're more able to deal with it and challenge it and change it so that your brain now knows that when you are sad you have alternative paths. You don't have to go down the binging path. Number three, identify your triggers and remove as many as you can. Because a lot of times, not always, but binging and purging episodes may be, um, so to speak, a crime of opportunity. So because you have the opportunity to engage in these behaviors, you do. For instance, let's say a, you know, your, your binging and purging behaviors may occur when the house is empty and you know that when you get home earlier on Wednesdays that the house is empty for three hours until the rest of your family begins to enter the house. Therefore, you know that that is a time that you can engage in your binging and purging behavior, so it may be planned out. So in that case, and, uh, and the opportunity is there for you. The trigger is that you have the house to yourself. What we would like to do in an ideal world is to remove that trigger. What that might look like is perhaps another person in there in your family might be able to alternate their schedule and be home with you. Or perhaps that is a time that you decide that you're going to catch up on your studies at the library. Or, you know, maybe you want to extend your hours at, at work or at school or stay there for a period of time or meet a friend. Anything to eliminate the, the trigger or the opportunity of being home alone. If sadness is your, your trigger, perhaps obviously you can't remove totally being sad, but what you would like to do is to be able to minimize the, the trigger there and say that, okay, I know that when I feel sad, I binge, so I'm going to try to address the initial trigger, which is feeling sad. So I'm going to try to learn to cope with it in alternative ways. I'm going to try to do other things that can respond to my sadness and perhaps put me even in a better mood. Whatever you can do to minimize the triggers for a binge and a purge episode, try your best to do it. Number four is do not, do not restrict your food intake. 
so many people feel that the best way to, you know, maybe um, compensate for a binge and purge is to restrict or perhaps your restricting leads you to binge and purge and oftentimes they are intertangled um, if you engage in both types of behaviors. So I talked about this in another video, uh, this binge, I'm sorry, yeah, this binge restrict cycle that occurs. So this is what happens, and I'm gonna, I talked more about this in that video, and I'll leave that link. Um, however, essentially, just to back it up a little bit, back in our caveman days, I know it's like, what a weird transition, but just bear with me. Back in our caveman days, when we were restricting our food intake, it was not by choice. It was because our, you know, maybe the crops washed out, or there was no meat, no animals coming through, so you really didn't have access to food. So therefore, when you were restrict restricting, it was not by choice. And your body, your drive to survival said that the next time food, again, on an unconscious level, the next time food sources are available to you, you need to make sure to stock up so you eat as much as you can. Therefore, the next time that you are restricting yourself, again, not by choice, you are able to sustain your 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 life. You are able to stay alive. You are able to, um, you know, just continue and, you know, be sustained. Flash forward to today's day and age. We have 24-7 drive throughs and 24-7 7-Elevens and pantries that are typically stocked. We have all this opportunity to, to eat, which is great. However, when it comes to the restricting cycle and the restricting binging cycle, what happens is that you might choose to restrict yourself for whatever reason. And before you know it, you might end up in front of the pantry or in line for one of those drive throughs and get a lot more food than you even had anticipated getting because your body, everyone likes to say it's a matter of willpower, but no, it's a matter of your body's drive for survival, which try to, you know, get it like compete with that, um, any type of species, when it comes down to their drive for survival, it's almost, it's very difficult to try to mitigate that. So we need to understand that it is actually our drive for survival because our body is confused. Our body doesn't realize that you have that access to food. It real, it, all it knows is that it is not getting enough nutrients. So it's telling you and it's driving you to eat as much as you can so that the next time you don't have food, you have enough to sustain you. And that is biology. Tip number five is to forgive yourself. Whatever happens, happens. There's nothing that you can gain from just hating on yourself and being mad at yourself. If you engage in behaviors that you're not too fond of or that you really wanted to avoid and you did it anyway, it's not a matter that you should have started beating yourself up over. It's a matter of, you know, saying, hey, you know, that, that's not something I wanted to do, but I did it and I need to move forward. Because what happens is that if you just are just so down on yourself and you just tear yourself apart, what happens is that that actually increases the likelihood of the behaviors occurring because it's, it, you start to have the, this might as well attitude that, you know, well, I already did this, so I might as well continue doing it. Or it's just that, oh, you feel hopeless and you decide that you're going to engage in those behaviors because why not? Because there's no hope for you anyway. There's just so many things that come along with being nasty to yourself and not forgiving yourself. So I know it's really, really difficult, but you need to forgive yourself. You are a human being. We all make errors. We all make mistakes. We all do things that aren't necessarily the best for us. And that's just part of the human experience. So you did it. Now forgive yourself and let's move on. I want to end this video by telling you that this cycle and eating disorders in general or disordered eating, it's hard to break. It is a difficult process. It is not something easy. It is messy. Recovery is messy and that's okay. It's all part of the process and just all we need to focus on is trying our best trying to move forward in recovery and that's the best that we can do and I really hope that you can have compassion toward yourself in this process because it is hard and patience for yourself during this process because it takes time. I hope that you found this video helpful or informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips to help break this cycle also. You could click my face over here to subscribe to my channel and I wish you compassion and patience for yourself on your journey to finding your state of balance. I will see you in my next video.